Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the Penny Trust's reception and graciously hosted by Kevin Brennan. Um, for those of you that don't know much about us, I'll just do a very quick introduction because we've got a number of people who'd like to speak to you this evening. Um, so Music Only Trust is a UK registered charity created in 2014 to protect, secure and improve the grassroots music venues of the UK. This is our second annual report. Some of you wanted to pay last year for the first time we did that annual report. Um, and We've been doing this work for a while, but being able to share with you the statistics about the sector is incredibly important and powerful. And we're really grateful for everyone who's supported diffusing that report and helping us use it to bring change in the last year. Um, grassroots music venues exist across all four nations of the UK, and we work really hard to try and make sure that our work takes place in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and England because these venues are so important partly because they are in these communities across the nations in large cities, in smaller cities, towns and sometimes in rural locations as well and one of the things that's incredibly important about grassroots music venues is that they are geographically and economically accessible the average ticket price in a grassroots music venue in the UK in the last year was £11.42. Bargain. And <laughs> we know from many reports about the success of the music industry that large-scale events have been terribly successful and important, but obviously they're not within reach of everyone. So part of what we believe is so important about grassroots music venues is that accessibility to communities across the UK. And in fact, 23.6 million people visited a grassroots music venue in the UK in 2023, which is an increase on the previous year. And sometimes people say to us, if they're asking about closures, well, is it that people are not interested in going anymore? And of course, that's not the case at all. The wish to see artists, to connect with them in small spaces, in local venues, is as high as it's ever been. And these venues are so important. So the fact that recognition for their cultural, social and economic worth and contribution to our society is growing is incredibly important. Tonight we will present the challenges and will propose solutions about sustaining this vital sector. But in order to do that, we're going to have a number of speakers. So it's now my great pleasure to bring Kevin back to the stage and he's going to tell you why he's hosting this event this evening. Thank you, thank you, Beverly. I'm sorry to disappoint my colleagues who thought my speech was exactly the right yeah, way. That was the <laughs> Beverly at the start of this evening. But thank you very much, everyone. It's a pleasure to host for the second time the Music Venues Trust here in the uh, House of Commons uh, in launching the, the second annual report. I'm Kevin Brennan, Member of Parliament for Cardiff West, and I also chair the All Party Parliamentary Group on Music. And by the way, it's great to see here this evening from my own constituency, Howell. Wigley, who runs a cappella. Uh, there he is, uh, uh, and he's standing next to Lady Nade. I've already bought four tickets to see Lady Nade at a cappella. And anyone here from a, a small music vendor, you should book Lady Nade <laughs> venue because she is uh, actually brilliant, brilliant. Oh, she's, she's also a patron of the Music Venture Trust and a brilliant artist, uh, songwriter. We wrote two songs together last year, actually, uh, in her own right. But she's doing a, uh, a wonderful Nina Simone uh, um, event as well, tribute uh, as part of her touring this year. So just fantastic to see so many people here from music venues, so many colleagues from both the House of Commons and the House of Lords here. I would say to people, you know, do, you know, get in touch with and contact your local members of Parliament because they really are very, very enthusiastic about, their, you know, things in their community and about facilities like small music venues. And I think it's really great and important that the Music Venues Trust is bringing its case and its arguments into Parliament uh, in this sort of way, because I can tell you there's plenty of other cultural organisations that have been doing that for a long, long time. So it's great to hear the case being made uh, to members of Parliament, to policy makers, to members of the House of Lords and so on here uh, in, the, in, the, in the Houses of Parliament. Um, some good news. Um, there is good news about music venues. I recently did a little spot at a soft opening of the Corn Exchange in Newport on 
on New Year's Eve. They've just reached today a £50,000 target with their community share offer uh, for the Corn Exchange. It was fantastic, you know, that, that, that sort of thing's going on. But let's be clear, 2023 was a really difficult year for, 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 for small grassroots music venues. A very challenging year, indeed, possibly the most challenging since the Music Venues Trust was founded in 2014. There were a significant number of venue closures. I think in the report, if you look, I think it dropped from 960 to 835. That's a really significant number. Uh, and that includes places like Ocean Arts in Cardiff, where I come from, but it also in includes some really iconic venues like Moles and Bath, which nurtured some of very, very well-known acts over the years in that kind of R&D way that I mean, small music venues can do. Acts like The Cure, Radiohead, The Smiths, Eurythmics, Tears for Fears, Oasis, Pulp, Blur, Fat Boy Slim, Ed Sheeran, all those artists, you know, played at that venue when they were on their way up in their careers. So this number of closures obviously reflects the sort of combination of challenging uh, issues that are faced by smaller music venues, whether that's, you know, the rates, whether it's VAT, whether it's rising energy and rent costs, which alone, if you look at the report, went up last year by an average of 37.5%. That kind of cost increase is very, very difficult for a small business on a very marginal basis to bear. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, this is a sector, which is why I made the point about coming here and making your case that historically is underfunded in cultural uh, terms uh, in comparison with other cultural organisations. So uh, despite the huge amount of income that grassroots uh, live music in 2023 generated, I think, again, the report, I think, says 134 million, uh, you know, it's a huge sum of money. The average grassroots music venue had a profit margin of 0.5%. And actually, 38.5% of these venues also reported making a loss in 2023. So it's been a tough year. But I do want to congratulate all of the team at the Music Venues Trust on accomplishing the first music venue purchase of the snug in Atherton through the music venue. Because if you can get music venues owning their own freeholds rather than be dependent on leaseholds and, and so on, then that's a real way of securing, uh, really genuine way of securing their future. I think that's a really welcome initiative and congratulations for achieving that. And, and that work of the, of the trust has been recognised, you know, in the uh, DCMS Creative Industries <laughs> Division and in the launch. And I know the culture, I've just left the culture committee, but Caroline Shino may say a few words later, uh, are launching uh, an inquiry into grassroots mu music venues in the, real, in the near future. And we know that kind of inquiry can be a real catalyst for change. And we've seen the PET over the last couple of years achieve a lot. Um, MVT are campaigning for ticket levy on large music events and arenas to help reinvest in grassroots venues. So every ticket sold at a music event in an arena, a stadium, or at a major festival would contain a contribution to grass the grassroots yeah, circuit, yeah. which, after all, supported and developed the development talent yeah. that those uh, festivals and large venues are benefiting from and, 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 and depend upon for their success. But the grassroots music venues aren't just a research and development part of the music industry. Important though that is, they're a cultural treasure in themselves. And it's a place to go to hear original, exciting music made by people from 16 to 60 or beyond, even in my case, uh, enriching our lives, reminding us what it is to be human and to gather together to be moved emotionally and physically uh, by the live experience of music created not by AI, but by HI, human inspiration. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference here. Enjoy the rest of the interview. Thank you very much.